Well, good morning, beloved church. And welcome to worship on this seventh Sunday after the festival of the Epiphany of our Lord. We gather today, as we always do, to pray for and support one another and the world in response to the gospel of Jesus the Christ. An extra welcome to those of you visiting with us today, whether here in the sanctuary or online with the live stream. Uh, I hope we get the chance to get to know each other better in the days to come. A few things to look forward to. This season of time after Epiphany is almost drawing to a close. Um, Next Sunday is Transfiguration of Our Lord, and that Wednesday then following, 10 days, give or take, is Ash Wednesday, and Lent begins. We'll be gathering for worship uh, that Wednesday, uh, 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary, also live streamed. Uh, We will have Ashes at home kits for the imposition of ashes, should you want to do that at home. And we will be imposing ashes here in the sanctuary if you'd like to worship in person. Uh, The following Wednesdays in Lent, then, will all be Zoom soup suppers uh, midweek. We'll gather on Zoom, we'll share soup together in our homes, and then we'll live stream a service for you to observe Vespers at home. Uh, So we'll be worshiping most of the Lent Wednesdays then. at home. Sundays will be in person. And so now, as God gathers us on this day of resurrection and new life, we prepare for worship with the music of the prelude.
Please rise as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by His authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for the salvation let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for this holy house, for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus, make us instruments of your peace, that where there is hatred we may sow love, where there is injury, pardon, and where there is despair, hope. Grant, O Divine Master, that we may seek to console, to understand, and to love in your name. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Genesis. Joys of age. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold to Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. 
God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep you alive for your many, for you, many survivors. So it was not you, all his house and ruler, oops. so it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. And now if you will sing the song with me, your part is in bold print. Do not provoke be, do not be provoked by evil doers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong. The wither like the, the grass and like green grass fade away. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and find safe pastures. Who shall give you heart? Commit your way to the Lord. Put your trust in the Lord and see what God will do. Justice in your case. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently. Do not be provoked by the ones who prosper, the ones who succeed in evil schemes. Do not provoke. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord shall possess the land. Even search out their place, they will not be there, but the lowly shall possess the land. They will delight in abundance of peace. You, O oh Lord, will help them and rescue them. You will rescue them from the wicked and deliver them because in you they seek refuge. The second reading is from Corinthians. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. 
so it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dis dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a physical body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is the first, but the physical, then the spiritual. The first man was from earth, a man of dust, a second man, is of heaven. As it was the man of dust, as was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I'd like to draw the attention of our young worshipers for a minute, both here in the sanctuary and at home. And I want to think a minute about maybe a time when you and your sibling, your brother or sister, are playing and you're having a good time and you're wiggling around and all of a sudden, boom, an elbow goes right into their nose and they start crying. Oh no. What do you do? What do you do? If you hurt if you hurt your you what? You gotta bandage it up, you gotta fix it, you gotta repair it. And then what do you say to your brother or your sister? You say you're sorry. Yeah, you say you're sorry. <laughs> the cool thing about saying sorry is it kind of resets things, right? It helps you start afresh and say, hey, I hurt you. That's not okay. Let's start again. New beginning. New beginning. Do you know that God makes new beginnings for us too? Yeah. Every Sunday we start worship by saying, God, I'm sorry. I, we've done things that maybe we didn't mean to do. And God says, you're forgiven. And that's how we start every day, every new day, with our siblings, with our parents, with our grandparents, with the whole world. The Lord be with you. Let's pray. God, we're so thankful that you teach us to say that we're sorry. We're so thankful that you teach us to try to repair what's been broken, to bandage things, to heal be with us as we continue in this way. In Jesus' name, amen. Alleluia, Lord and Savior, open now your saving word. Let it burn like fire within us. Speak until our hearts are stirred. Alleluia, Lord, we sing for the good news that you bring. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory, Glory to you, O oh Lord. Jesus said, But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, 
Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. And if anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend it to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend it to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for He is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Honestly, when it came to my high school years, I was a pretty well-behaved kid, all things considered. I was in the marching band and in the choir, uh, both at church and at school, and Saturday nights, you'd often find me at Bible study (laughs) with my buddies. Yeah, we were a bunch of nerds. Um, not to say I didn't push the boundaries here and there, but overall, this stage of life, at least for me, was, was less tumultuous than it could have been. But there was one area in which I excelled in youthful misbehavior. Driving. I know, yeah. Uh, it, at one point, I think it was the summer after I got my driver's license, the street in front of my elementary school, the whole block, was closed, clearly, for road repairs, resurfacing the whole like. Um, and one day I was driving by, and, and instead of going around and following the detour, I looked at the sign that said, local traffic only. I'm a local, <laughs> I thought. Uh, and so I decided to go right through but I didn't get very far. (laughs) For it turns out that giant piles of gravel, even when you're weaving through them, tend to have a way of jerking your tires and moving your car in directions that you wouldn't expect it to go in. And so, before long, I found myself popping up over the curb, through the wooden fence, and into the kindergarten playground. Yeah. Thankfully, it was summertime. Classes were not in session. No one was playing on the playground equipment. And it also seemed that the road workers must have been on lunch break or something because there was no one around that I could see. And so I just left. But someone was there. And someone did see. And it caught up with me before too long. And I was soon introduced to the concept of making restitution. The court ordered that I had to make restitution. And so I got to know the school leadership there on a whole new level that coming year as I worked to complete my community service hours there. Did that restitution make things right? I mean, the fence still had to be repaired. 
not by me, by someone who knew what they were doing. Um, so I couldn't exactly repair things technically in that regard, but, but the community service work did allow for a rebuilding of trust after I'd broken that trust. It was an opportunity for repair. And I wonder if something similar isn't at play in Jesus' admonitions in this sermon of His of sorts that we hear today. For we get this familiar slew of sayings all dancing around that golden rule that it has come to be called, right? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. But there's more here than just the golden rule. Rule. There's, there's more here than just eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. You broke this, so if you just fix it, we'll now call it good. No, Jesus seems to be pointing beyond that simple fix. Towards a way of, of being in relationship with one another that, that actually works at healing and repairing those places that have been broken by by injustices and in violence uh, and violence between us. And this collection of sayings that are put together in this sermon, they hinge on this verse in the middle, verse 36, be merciful as your Father is merciful. And that word mercy, merciful, that's, that's an intentionally loaded word here. For this word mercy, the Gospel writer would have seen that word in the Hebrew Scriptures. They would have seen that word in that phrase that may be familiar to you describing God as the one who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Relational words. Gracious, merciful, slow to anger, abounding in love. It's that refrain that's shared time and again from, from Exodus to Deuteronomy to the Psalms and even to, to Jonah and Nehemiah. It's a refrain that reminds us of God's faithfulness to us, to all of humanity. And how God finds ways to bring new life, new beginnings in the circumstances where we thought new life might have been impossible. But sometimes that journey of repair, of course, is harder than we'd prefer it to be. The work of rebuilding trust and learning new behaviors is hard. And long. And may take compromise and patience and commitment and energy that we don't think we have. But the thing is, we're not alone in this endeavor. Because we trust that the Holy Spirit is at work in this process too. Luther shares about this in his explanation to the third article of the Creed where he says, the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel and enlightened me with her gifts, made me holy and kept me in the true faith. Just as she calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one common true faith. And so we rely on that Holy Spirit then to support us, to walk alongside us, to push us forward in this healing, this reconciliation, this work that continues to need to be done. And we trust that such divine mercy will indeed shape us together as God's people as we move forward in the faith one grace-filled step at a time. May it be so this day and always.
The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. You teach us to love our neighbors and enemies alike. Encourage your church to follow the leading of your love, especially when it's risky or difficult. Help us to show mercy just as we have received mercy. God of grace, nurture fields that lay dormant, resting until the time of bloom again. Bless farmers and all who cultivate fields and urban gardens. Give fair, favorable weather for planting. Bring forth the buried seed, an abundant harvest, and guard against famine and disease. God of grace, look upon our world with mercy, that we delight in an abundance of peace. Protect all whose lives are marred by war and civil unrest. Release political prisoners and amplify voices that challenge us to seek forgiveness and pursue nonviolence. God of grace. Your people cry out for mercy. Console hearts that long for forgiveness. Men broken relationships, heal bodies that suffer chronic pain or illness, strengthen and deliver all whose spirits are troubled, especially Andrea, Lila, Dale, Tom, Mark, Helen, Alexandra, Janie, Oswald, David, Ken, Camille, Christine, Jill, Adam, Ruth, Lisa, Bill, Marana, Irene, Kendall, Phyllis, Susan, the family and friends of Nancy Drifts, the family and friends of John Catlin, the family and friends of Jane Studley, and all those in need of comfort and healing. God of grace, we praise you for the saints who have inherited the fullness of your kingdom. As you have raised them to imperishable and eternal life, sustain us in the faith by the promise of resurrection. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and in faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Peace. Peace. Peace, Trinda. Peace. Peace. Peace.
Please rise as you are able. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, you alone are holy. You alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. We praise you, O God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We bless you, O God. We give you thanks for your dear Son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. We thank you, O God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your Spirit in our gathering, within this meal, among your people throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your Spirit, in your church without end. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another. 
for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As God has gathered us and filled our hearts with word and sacrament, now God sends us forth to serve in mission. Let us pray. Gracious, Gracious God, God, through belief in Christ, Christ and, and through the, the presence of the Holy Spirit, Spirit within us, empower us to share the word, care and support each other in God's community, worship as a family in Christ, and be Christ-like examples to those whose lives we touch. Amen. Amen. The God of hope, fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, through Christ Jesus, the Word made flesh. Amen. Amen. My children with my blessing Go in peace, follow the stars. Thanks be to God. I forgot my mask. <laughs>